As someone who's successfully founded multiple businesses, I cannot overstate how important it is to have a single source of truth for your business, for inventory, for revenue, and on and on. There's an amazing tool called NetSuite that can help you do just that. Visit netsuite.com slash SPI to download their KPI checklist for free and support this podcast. If you do find yourself buried in manual work or struggling to have a clear picture of your business, you should know three numbers, 37,000, 25, and one. 37,000, that's the number of businesses which have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. Number 25, well, NetSuite turns 25 years old this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. And the number one, because your business is one of a kind. So you get a customized solution for all of your KPIs in one efficient system with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need to grow all in one place. And right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash SPI. That's netsuite.com slash SPI to get your own KPI checklist. netsuite.com slash SPI. There was once a time when building a website was a massive undertaking and a huge pain, something that you would need to clear your entire schedule for. Well, guess what? Those days are over, and now you can build a professional, sparkling website in just seconds, thanks to Hostinger. In fact, I recently did this, and I shared the process on my YouTube channel, and it was absolutely mind-blowing, especially considering it took like days on end previously when I first started building websites. This tool is amazing, and I was using AI to do it. So Hostinger is a top highly rated global web hosting and website creation brand, right? And all you have to do to build a website is answer three questions. Here it is. You enter your brand name, you select the website type, you describe your business, and then you can customize it further with a drag and drop editor. It's literally that simple. I just went through this process. I promise you it is the easiest way to build a website. And it also offers some AI-driven SEO-friendly copy, an AI logo maker. Plus, they make all this super affordable. It's less than $3 a month, including a free domain name. So create a live website now at hostinger.com slash SPI. And listeners of this podcast can enter SPI for 10% off your order and a free domain name. H-O-S-T-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash SPI. And use the code SPI for 10% off and a free domain name. It's incredible. Now back to the show. This is the Smart Passive Income Podcast with Pat Flynn, session number 264. Rick or treat. Welcome to the Smart Passive Income Podcast, where it's all about working hard now so you can sit back and reap the benefits later. And now your host, he prefers Australian-made coffee over any other, Pat Flynn. Job searches can feel like they're taking forever, a real slog. So stop searching and just match with Indeed. So ditch the busy work, use Indeed for scheduling, screening, messaging, so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. If you want to hire fast, you need to go where the talent is. You can get unparalleled access to job seekers with over 350 million unique visitors globally, according to Indeed data, and an extended reach through Glassdoor. I love how adaptable Indeed is uh, as well, whether you're hiring one person or you need lots for a scalable project, like hiring platform that lets you schedule and interview hundreds of candidates in one day, like there's no other one that you would wanna use. So join more than three and a half million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash smart passive. Just go to indeed.com slash smart passive right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash smart passive. Terms and conditions apply. You need to hire, you need Indeed. If you're at a desk a lot like I am, it is really important to move around and increase circulation as much as possible. And a sit slash stand desk can be a massive game changer. If you haven't tried one before, this offer from Uplift is for you. Plus you can support the show at the same time. Visit upliftdesk.com slash SPI for 5% off your order. Uplift Desk is the place to go. There are so many customization options, plus free 30 day returns, free shipping, free accessories with every desk. And did I mention the industry-leading 15-year warranty? It's no wonder they've been wire cutters pick for six years in a row. Plus, they offer a great range of ergonomic chairs and storage systems if you want to give your whole workspace a makeover. They even have an augmented reality feature so you can see what your new desk will look like in your space using your phone. I mean, they even make a height-adjustable conference table that doubles as a regulation-sized ping-pong table. These folks have really thought of it all. And if you want to build the workstation of your dreams, I highly recommend checking them out. 
Just go to upliftdesk.com slash SPI for 5% off your order. That's U-P-L-I-F-T desk.com slash SPI to get 5% off your entire order. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me today in this session of the SPI podcast. And welcome to May 2017, which kicks off Advertising Month here on Smart Passive Income, which means a number of guests who are coming on the podcast and a number of blog posts being published on the site, including some guest posts that we have as well, are gonna be dedicated to learning more about advertising. This is a topic that I am now diving into myself now that I finally have my own courses and products to share out there that are my own, and I hope you have them too, or in the future will have them too, to share and serve your audience with which is why I wanted to bring experts on now so we can learn together. And I'm very, very happy to welcome Rick Mulready to the show to help kick this month off. Rick is the host of the Art of Paid Traffic podcast. He also has rickmulready.com, and he's in San Diego with me. He and I hang out. We work at the same co-working space. We hang out as friends, and he's super cool and somebody I really look up to, and he's really done some amazing things in the world of, of advertising. And so we're gonna talk a lot about the strategies and uh, mainly around Facebook, but other things too, but mostly how to approach it, who is it for, how you can get started on a budget or heart with hardly any investment at all, and to make sure that you're doing it right. Because I've tried it, I've kind of dabbled in it a little bit before, maybe some of you have sort of dabbled in it as well, and maybe you didn't get the results you wanted and then got scared like me and just kind of kind of went back to content production, you know? But the nice thing about advertising is it allows people who need your product to see it and they wouldn't be able to see it otherwise. That's the whole point here, right? Not just to get more eyeballs, but to get the right eyeballs on your stuff. And so let's not wait any longer. Let's welcome Rick Mulready from rickmulready.com and the art of paid traffic. Here he is. What's up, everybody? I'm so happy to welcome a great friend of mine here, a local in San Diego, and this is Rick Mulready from the Art of Paid Traffic podcast and rickmulready.com. What's up, Rick? Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, buddy. I am uh, really honored to be here. Thanks for having me on. Well, I'm returning the favor. You remember, I was on your show. And that, that was <laughs> awesome. Uh, and now I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you back, uh, not only because you're awesome, but because of the topic that you've become this very much of an expert in that uh, you are here to help us with today, and that is Facebook ads. Yeah. And this has been something that's, I know, been on a lot of people's minds lately, especially mine and with the upcoming courses that I have or some courses that have already come out. I've been implementing some things here and there. You've taught me quite a bit just from the one-on-ones -on -one that we've had together. Uh, and I've hired some other people to help me as well. And it's just mm -hmm. become this huge thing that now people are like, Pat, like, teach me Facebook ads because <laughs> everybody says that that's what we need to do. And I'm like, I don't know how to teach it. So I figured- Oh, they're asking you? They're, they're asking, asking me, yeah. Okay, cool. Because they know I have a lot of online advice, but uh, sure, sure. I definitely don't know uh, Facebook ads like I do know other things. So I wanted to get you on board to come and help us out. Uh, cool. So before I start that though, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of what you're up to. Uh, I, I think some people in the audience might know who you are, mm. uh, but others don't. So why, why yeah. don't you take that first? Well, I've been, I, I had the conversation recently where I had the realization that, you know what, I've been doing online advertising now for 17 years. And when I said that out loud, I was like, holy cow, that's a long time. <laughs> Has the internet been around that long? <laughs> no, really. Uh, and this is, I call this like the wild west days of the internet back in 2000 when I literally joined AOL when they were, they still had the discs. You know, and you still oh. had like the dial up noise. 200 like, free hours or I'm whatever. I'm totally dating myself right now. <laughs> But yeah, I've been in the online ad space since then, and, and it's been an amazing ride. But for from, from a Facebook ads perspective, um, I've been doing Facebook ads now for about seven years. So seven of those 17 um, started back in 2010 while I was in the corporate world mm -hmm. uh, selling online ads. And then I decided to teach myself, you know, I was looking for a way to leave the corporate world and do my own thing. And I figured that I was I saw what was going on with Facebook. So I was like, you know what, that's a that's a possible outlet for me where I could, you know, uh, there's a natural sort of, I've been, I, I understand the online ad world and, and Facebook was, was becoming this meteoric thing that it is today so many years ago. And I naturally gravitated towards that ad side. So just jumped in, taught myself as much as I possibly could, ran ads for people, um, you know, just to kind of get my feet wet with it. And, and that mm -hmm. was seven, that started seven years ago. And, um, now I create, uh, training courses for, for, for Facebook ads with a podcast, Art of Paid Traffic, where we talk a lot about Facebook ads. I speak on it. So it's, it's really, you know, I, I think that I was just actually doing some videos this morning 
And, you know, one of the things I was talking about was I firmly believe that hands down Facebook ads are the fastest and easiest way to grow your business. And I was just going to say before we kind of get talking about my background here, I'm so pumped that you're finally at a point where you're not at a point, but you're, you finally made the decision to like kind of go in on it now Mm -hmm. because you and I have been talking about Facebook ads for your business, like at least two years now. And yeah, you've always been kind of like, you know, I, 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 I want to do it, but I want to have the right time to do it. And like, I'm excited because your business has been so successful up until this point, And now you're adding this whole other element to it. And it's like, holy cow, let the, let, let the real fun begin. <laughs> or let more fun begin. Yeah, let more fun begin. <laughs> yeah. that, that's right. Uh, you know, for those of uh, people out there who are listening who aren't quite convinced on Facebook ads yet, I mean, you say it's the fastest way to yep. grow and scale your business. Like, what would, you yep. say, what would you say to them? I just assume that kind of people know that this is a thing that everybody should get involved with at some point. But sure, sure. I want to hear from your, your mouth, like, why, if somebody's not convinced yet, should Facebook be a major player in the growth and scale of their business? Yeah. I mean, the first thing that you'd want to just look at is the number of, of daily active users on Facebook. When we're recording this, Facebook just came out with these numbers for the end of 2016. So 1.23 billion daily active users. That's a lot of people. And so depend whatever your niche is, that, that means that your audience is on Facebook. It's just a matter of finding them. Mm-hmm. And the ability to one of the one of the, the most beautiful things about Facebook advertising is that you can target so distinctly, whether that is, you know, sort of the stereotypical um, type of Facebook ads targeting where like I want to I want to target fans of, you know, Pat Flynn and smart passive income or I want to target fans of social media examiner, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm you can get so targeted, laser targeted within that 1.23 billion people, daily active users to find your specific audience. And then in addition to that, I know that, you know, some people say, well, like if I've tried Facebook ads and I just don't understand the interface and stuff like that. When you look at the interface that of, of the Facebook ads interface, number one, it's gotten a lot better over the past several years. It's very, it, it actually is user friendly. I say that laughing because a lot of people don't think that. But when you compare it to thing like, things like Google AdWords or, or YouTube ads or other platforms out there, it's very user friendly. And once you do get the hang of it, it is very intuitive. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the challenge there for most people, and I hear this a lot from my students and, and listeners of the podcast and so forth, is that just keeping up with everything, you know, because they change everything, they change things a lot for, pretty frequently. Mm-hmm. That's a real challenge for people is that just keeping up with those with those changes. But for those reasons, I mean, I think that if you've got something to sell, especially if you've got a proven strategy in place where you have something to sell and people people are buying it from you. I mean, I really think Facebook ads are the next natural progression there for you. Okay, so is the line if you're not selling anything yet, you shouldn't even worry about Facebook ads or is that not true? Well, and see, this is such a great point, such a great question. This is the the thing that I, that I see, a big mistake I see people make is that, um, especially with that boost post button, you know, that's on Facebook, you, you post on your Facebook page, you've got that nice little boost post button there. And the reason I'm not a big fan of the boost post button is because most people who use that button, I say most, not all, is that they don't have a strategy in place. They're like, I just want more people to see this. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not a good reason because you are spending money. I mean, that's a form of Facebook ads. I mean, you're spending money to, to boost that post. You should have some sort of strategy for making that money back, whether it's immediate or down the road. And so I bring that up because it, it aligns with the question that you just asked as far as, you know, if you don't have a product at this point, should you be using Facebook ads? I still think you could be using Facebook ads to say, like, grow your email list yep. or start getting traffic to your website if you're mm-hmm. not already so that you can use, and, and, and this is more sort of advanced conversation, I'm happy to have if you want, but then you start getting to pixeling and creating custom audiences of people visiting your website and so forth. So if you have the strategy of, you know what, I don't have a product or something to sell or a service yet, but I, I want to start building my email list or getting uh, uh, traffic to my site in an effort to lead me to when I do have my program or service I can leverage this, you know, my email list or my website traffic in order to sell that. I think that's okay. Okay, great. And we'll get into some more advanced stuff uh, later in the show and I'll share a little bit of, of what I'm up to as well. 
uh, and some of the game plan too, which I'm really excited about. Um, yep. Is there a right time? Let's say you, you had mentioned earlier, like, oh, uh, when is the right time to do it? Mm-hmm. For people who have a product and they are making sales, like when is the right time? Is it after, is there a certain threshold they have to pass or is it literally just, hey, if you're selling, you can use Facebook to help sell more? Yeah, I like to look at like Facebook ads or any kind of paid traffic really as sort of a faucet. Like, so when I want to turn on or when I want to increase the leads coming in, then I can just go to Facebook advertising or any other form of paid traffic and sort of quote unquote turn that on. Mm -hmm. And so to, to leverage Facebook ads as sort of that mechanism to kind of, all right, you know what? We need some more revenue this month. Let's, let's do that. Now the, the real win there becomes when this is, it, it's on evergreen, meaning you're, you're running Facebook ads in the background of your business. And that's really what I get excited about because then you can start to create, you know, automated income coming into your business when, you know, when you're not working on the business, you've got Facebook ads running in the background, selling that product or service that you've got uh, in the business. And so you're, so you're making money while you're not having to be, be worrying about managing your ads and at, at all, you know, at all hours of the day. But there's really no threshold there. I think the, the the best thing is is as long as you, if you do have something to sell, if you have a program, let's just say you have a program to sell or a course to sell, and you are selling it, you're making sales, you've kind of started to identify who your target audience is, that's a great time to start to start to open up those floodgates um, okay. uh, to get to get more sales. But keep in mind that you know Facebook ads and paid traffic in general are not going to solve a conversion problem, meaning like if you've got people coming in already and they're not purchasing your, whatever your offer is, Facebook ads are not going to solve that. (laughs) Yeah. They don't really change how people use your website once they get there. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Now the last sort of mindset thing I want to talk about, which is kind of what we've been doing before we move on to some of the more technical things. And we're not going to get super technical. And like Rick mentioned, you know, Facebook is always making changes. So we're going to make sure that we keep this content in this episode as evergreen as possible for you. So mainly learning about sort of how things work and Rick knows more than anybody in terms of, okay, what's going to stick around for a while um, is, is okay. Somebody's like, okay, yeah, that, that sounds great. But you know, I don't have much money to spend. Like I, I can't afford yep. to just quote, waste a hundred bucks on, on an ad spend and not know if it's going to work or not. Like how, how do you deal with people who have and share that sort of uh, philosophy yeah, right now? For sure. I mean, and that's another, I keep saying like, that's a beautiful thing about Facebook ads. This is another one of those beautiful things because you can see very quickly how successful if you've, if you've started some ads and you're not spending much money and we'll, we'll talk about that more granularly in a second, you can tell very quickly in a matter of a few days, whether your ads are working or not. And you know, it doesn't take much budget in order to do that. I mean, you can spend five to $10 a day and see some results. And the idea there is if you're just starting out, spend a little bit of money, Mm. get some momentum, start to, you know, start to see where those leads and sales are coming in. And then it's like, okay, whatever, whatever money that you make from the ads that you're running there, you pour it back into the ads. I see. And you, it's just sort of like a snowball effect. But you don't need to start off with, holy cow, I'm going to run $100 a day. No, you don't need to do that. You can start off at that you know, 5 or $10 a day mark and then work up, work up from there with the goal of, okay, you know what? I'm going to test things out. You know, I'm so glad you bring up that word Pat, um, mindset. Because mm-hmm. this is a huge mindset thing is you've got to go into Facebook ads with the mindset of, you know what, the first little while is a testing is a testing period where I'm not expecting to get amazing results right out of the gate, but I might have to, you know, I might have to test for the next 30, 60 days, you know, but that doesn't mean you're spending thousands of dollars doing that. It's just, it's just a matter of, okay, I'm going to take a little bit of budget start to to test the different things out here, see what works, see what doesn't. And then again, really key in on the things that are working and then reinvest that money that you're making from the ads back into the ads so you can have that snowball effect. Got it. So when you start, you could just kind of slowly open that faucet and start yep. to potentially see some water come out instead of like, all right, I'm, I'm going to get started. Get the fire hose. Brad, right, I'm just going to say, it's like, not, go. Okay. it does not have to be a fire hose. Okay, exactly. great. Um, okay. So let first question, which I'm sure everybody has when they want to do this, but they don't know where to start, which is yep. where do I start? Like, what do I need to have before even, you know, moving forward with this? 
Yeah. And, and we're talking about, you know, this is that whole mindset thing is number one is why are you doing Facebook ads? And, and really be clear on the answer to that question. Whenever I start talking about somebody who's doing Facebook ads, I always ask them, OK, why are you doing them? What's the you know, what's the reason? So what are some good answers and what are some not so good answers? <laughs> I'll start with the not so good. Answer. Okay. The not so good answer is, well, I see my friends doing this and I keep hearing how amazing Facebook ads are, do are, are for your business. So I started to do them. Mm. That's terrible. That's not a good answer. Um, I applaud you for, you know, for, for jumping in and, and starting that. But you've got to have a strategy in place, meaning what we we're talking about before. And so if I do ask that question and someone says, well, you know what? I have a program. I have a service. You know, we're, we're, we're making some sales in the business. It doesn't have to be a lot, but people are buying it. We've identified our target audience and we want to test some Facebook ads out. Cool. Here. And this is the plan that we kind of have in place to 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 do this. That's a great answer. That's what I want to hear, because too many times people go into it without having that clear game plan or clear strategy. Mm -hmm. That's a quick way to lose money. Right, right. And a lot of people have lost a lot of money with yes. not knowing why they're doing what they're doing. Um, exactly. Is another good answer something like, uh, and I'm just thinking of my book, Will It Fly? Hey, I'm uh, testing out a new product idea and I just want to see what people's initial reactions are uh, and see if I can get a few sales to validate this product. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Just keep in mind, though, that it's not like, remember back in the four hour work week, you know, Tim Ferriss talked about validating offers where you just have like a, um, you know, you have the ad out there and just looking at how often people clicked on the ad. Well, it's, it's not quite that easy anymore on Facebook. You know, okay. Facebook has really, and again, I don't want to go down to too much of a rabbit hole here, but suffice it to say that Facebook is doing everything it can to protect the user experience mm -hmm. because it knows that without users, you know, it's not going to make the ad revenue. Right. And so part of that is if somebody clicks on your ad, it does need to go to a functioning landing page that um, is not so much a, just a, a flat out squeeze page anymore. Squeeze page meaning like uh, it, you land on it and it's simply just, you know, a picture of whatever your ebook, let's just say, and give me your name and email and that's it. You know, they want to have some more information on there. Again, user experience, have a good user experience for that person. Okay. So you can absolutely val test and validate, you know, some ideas that you have, but just make sure that it's going to, you know, a, 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 a landing page that is functional, has got some information on there. You know, that Facebook, it really wants to make sure that you're a valid, you know, valid business. Right. And so just make sure if you are going to do that, that, that you have that in play. Okay, great. So let's go back to the question. Where do I start? What do I need, Rick, to get started uh, using Facebook? Yeah, well, it's the, and the you got to have that game plan. You got to okay. you got to have that strategy in place. That's the first thing. And so, okay, you know what? I'm going. I have a course coming out. How am I going to sell that course? Um, and, and that's what I'm talking about with the game plan. Am I going to do a webinar? Am I going to do a video series? Am I going to just give something away? Start to email people and then lead them into the sale. Be really clear on what that game plan is that you're going to test. Okay. And again, on on this one here, from a mindset perspective. There's no right or wrong. It's what am I going to test first to see if this works? Um, so once we have that, we want to be really clear on what our offer is. What are, we, what, are we, what are we putting in front of our target audience? And that offer could be, um, you know, often, I, I, and I say offer, I use that kind of loosely, meaning I don't necessarily mean the, the ultimate sale. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about a course, maybe the initial offer that you're, that you're making with the Facebook ad is a webinar and you have your topic on the webinar, or maybe it's a, a cheat sheet download or something or a video or whatever that is. Maybe that is your initial offer. And then from there, you want to be really clear on what is the promise of what that person's going to get if they click on your ad. And so be really clear on what the offer is and then how are you gonna communicate that offer to your ideal target audience? Which brings me to the next thing is you've got to be very clear when you're starting out of who your target audience is. Uh, if, okay. Yeah, you've gotta be really clear on that. So like whatever niche that you're in, who are you serving? How can you help people um, with the knowledge that you have? And then, and then once you have those things, then you can start to get into the more sort of technical side of setting things up, meaning like, okay, now I have to build my, my Facebook ad and I have to, um, you know, set the targeting and all that stuff in, in the Facebook ads interface, also have a landing page and that sort of thing. But in the, in the very first things that you've got to have lined up or like the strategy and the, and the offer 
how you're going to communicate that, the target audience, and so forth. Okay, so even before we start setting up an ad, obviously, like you said, we need to know why are we doing this? What is it yep. that we're promising? What's the offer? Yep. Um, but then more than that, I feel like what's really important is is understanding you know the target audience, like you said. And is yep. it is Facebook wise enough to say, okay, here's my, like if I say, hey, here's my product, here's my website, will Facebook determine where my audience is or that, like what kinds of things do I have to know? What if, like, do I have to know what websites they're at, what conferences they go to? Like when you say, where is my audience? Mm -hmm. What do you mean exactly? Yeah, I like to, all those things that you just said, I like to keep a list. I'm a big fan of using Evernote to do this for myself and in our business is that we just keep an ongoing list of uh, like competitors in the space, other people who, um, might be teaching Facebook advertising, for example, other people who have audiences that might be interested in Facebook ads. Um, so I'm looking at, you know, the competitive space, other, other similar, um, interest in my space, um, not my space, but in my <laughs> space, if you target my space, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, lost my train of thought there when I'm no, talking sorry. about MySpace. No, no, no. Um, and then, yeah, and then exactly like what, what what publications do they read? What associations might they be a part of? Do they read certain books, um, newspapers, magazines? Do they attend certain conferences. Are there certain TV shows that they watch? Um, are there uh, other stores they might visit? You know, I always use the example of like. Um, if I'm in the yoga niche, for example, mm -hmm. I definitely want to be targeting people who have an interest in yoga, but also people who maybe shop at like Lululemon, for example, or, um, maybe women who shop at Whole Foods, mm -hmm. you know, it's like thinking outside the box a little bit about your specific niche. Just keep a tally, like keep a list of that. And then Facebook has a free tool inside ads manager, which is right inside Facebook and it's called audience insights. So you can you can put in there, let's just say I'm going to put, um, I don't know, Lululemon in there into into audience insights. Mm -hmm. When I put that in there, it will tell me what the audience breakdown is from a demographic standpoint. And so it, it's, it's going to say, I'm, I mean, for sure, for Lululemon, it's going to say female. And it's probably going to tell me like, I don't know, 90 percent female, 10 percent male. And then it's going to give me an age breakdown as well for that audience of people who have an interest in Lululemon. But then I think more importantly, it's also going to give you a whole list of other quote unquote interests on Facebook that are similar to Lululemon. So you might, um, what's, <laughs> of course I pick a niche that I don't know very much about. <laughs> um, so another, like another, uh, Lorna Jane. Uh, that's what I was thinking about, Lorna Jane. So Lorna Jane yeah. might come up. I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't think about Lorna Jane. Okay, cool. I'm going to add Lorna Jane to my list and that's a potential target audience that I might want to do as well. So Audience Insights is a really cool like free tool within Facebook that you can use to do audience uh, targeting research there. Nice. Athleta is another one, I think. Yes. Uh, now, now I'm like brainstorming. Gaia. Or don't they make like oh, yeah, yeah. yoga no, mats? Oh yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, April, my wife gets all those magazines and stuff. Um, anyway, okay, so we have the we have ideas on where we can find uh, our target audience. Competitors, like you said, let me just go over the list. Competitors, um, you know, different blogs uh, and and personalities, of course. Mm -hmm. yep. um, there's publications, books, newspapers, conferences, TV shows, uh, other other interest stores they visit. Uh, that that gives us a good idea in terms of okay, yeah. when when we're targeting our audience. Um, we kind of reach out to those people. Okay, let, let's go with this yoga example just so we can keep it concrete, I guess. Sure. So let's say we are selling a brand new yoga product, yep. um, like a, a yoga mat that has speakers built into it. Sweet. Yeah, Bluetooth That's speakers. So you can like listen to your you know, soothing music while you're laying on the mat and uh, doing those poses. Anyway. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say like heavy metal and I was like, no, 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 it defeats the purpose, Matt. <laughs> I don't know. You, you, you can, well, there are those yoga classes that have like like thrashy music. Yeah. Or what about yoga classes that are, you know, they're they're in those heated rooms. Oh. What yeah. if your yoga mat heated <laughs> up, <laughs> so you could be in a heated room, and it came in like this plastic box that you can. <laughs> People are gonna steal these ideas and run with them. You realize? I love uh, it. It'll be on Shark Tank one day, and then I'll be like, that was mine. Uh, and then it'll fail, and then I'll be like, that wasn't mine. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, I got this idea from Pat Flynn. <laughs> no, right? Okay, so we have this idea for some new uh, yoga yeah. product. Let's say Bluetooth speaker yoga, uh, yoga mat. 
Yep. Um, and okay, I, I know it's making sales on my website, mm-hmm. um, but I want to increase the sales. Okay, I know that my target audiences are women who shop at Lululemon and Athleta and Gaia and all those other ones we mentioned. Uh, yep. Women who shop at uh, Whole Foods and Jimbo's and Sprouts and you know mm-hmm. whatever. Okay, what else do I need? Like, do I need what, do I need any other assets? Do I need to make videos or like? Obviously, there's going to be like, what's the next step? Yeah, for sure. Well, the other thing too, I would look at with our target, with our targeting is, do we have an email list? Are we getting traffic to our website? And so do we want to assume that we are or not? Because we can go in different ways here with the targeting group, like to expand our targeting as well. What do you mean? Well, I mean, so if we have an email list, we can upload that email list into Facebook and Facebook will match the people who are on your email list who are also Facebook users and then you can turn around and, and Facebook creates an audience of those people. So then you can target those specific people on your email list with your offer as well. And that's called a lookalike audience, right? That's actually, that's actually called a custom audience. Never mind. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fail. Uh, then, this is why you're you, teaching. <laughs> then you can actually create a lookalike audience from the people who are on your email list. Ah. And so then it gets really cool. And, I, and again, like, Lookalike audiences, the, Facebook's algorithm has gotten much better with creating lookalike audiences for you. In a real quick nutshell, what a, what a lookalike audience is, is Facebook looks at, for example, the people on your email list or the people visiting your website, and it looks at the attributes of those people, and then it goes and finds you other people, brand new people on Facebook with similar attributes. And you could target those cre- people. Exactly. And that's what they call lookalike audience. So is this this kind of this lookalike audience, is this another separate sort of channel of promoting ads to yep. uh, uh, versus like the ones we mentioned earlier? Exactly. Yeah, this is so I, I like to start with warm traffic first, warm traffic, meaning these people are familiar with who I am and my brand. So these are people who are on my email list or, or my website visitors or my Facebook fans. Okay. And then we kind of move down sort of that temperature a little bit to look like audiences. So if we're creating a look like audience, for example, out of our maybe our our customer list, if we mm-hmm. have a list of our customers in our email CRM, we can upload those customers and then create a look like audience out of those people. Got it. And that's really cool because those are, you know, those are people with similar attributes as people who are paying you money. And that's really, really cool. And then after the lookalike audiences, then we would move into the audiences we were talking about before. Those are what we call like the cold audiences. People who, if we're targeting, you know, women who go to Whole Foods, for example, they're probably not going to know who we are. And so that's why we call that the cold audience there. Okay. So when, when we start this process, do we do all three hot, warm, and cold at the same time? Or do we start with hot, meaning our email list and probably, correct me if I'm wrong, people who have liked our Facebook page if we have one? Yeah, I mean, it, it really depends. It really depends on what our goal is. So here in this example that we're using, like our 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 new yoga mat, for example, let's just say that we are um, we you know we're just kind of we our campaign here is we just want to sell more of our our brand new yoga mats. Yep. Okay. And so in that case, depending on what our budget is, yeah, I would break out. I would be targeting our our warm traffic, meaning people who have visited our. Uh, and I'm keeping this very simple, like very high level here. Mm-hmm. But I'm tar- we're, we're, I would say target people who visit our our um, our website, and then target people who are on our um, our uh, on our email list, and then our Facebook fans, and then look to target also. And this is, by the way, not all in one what Facebook calls an ad set. Like these are separate because we're breaking these out. And you want to know which one kind of works better? Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. And then we would look at okay the Whole Foods or the, you know, people who read Yoga Journal or something like that. So that's kind of how it kind of sort of classify the targeting there. Okay. And you had mentioned targeting people who have visited our own website. This is when we yep. start to get into uh, what's called retargeting, right? Yeah, exactly. So we would, we would have, Facebook has a pixel. We place that pixel on our website and we put it in our website's theme and then it's covering the entire website. But then that's only step one then we have to go into Facebook and start creating those retargeting audiences. So for example, I can create an audience of everybody who visits my any page of my website. So any vis, any any website visitor, I can create a, a, an audience of those people. And so then I can turn around and retarget those people. So if you have your, you know, your yoga website, you can turn around and target people who anybody who visited your your website there saying, "Hey, check out this new, you know, this new awesome yoga mat." Right. Or 
my website's actually not a yoga mat website. It's a fitness website, and yoga yep. is just one part of it. So exactly. I could actually see who goes. Uh, I could. I could. So wait, when you set up these groups, depending on these pixels on your website, does mm-hmm. is it like the moment you set them? Does it keep track then after people like going forward? Going yep. forward, so I can't like backtrack. Yeah, so you place the pixel. So it's only one pixel now. So Facebook, you, you, Facebook gives you the pixel for your Facebook ads account. And let's just, we'll put it like, let's just say you put it on your website. Okay. That's step one. Then you still have to go into Facebook to create the audiences that you want to target. So for example, for let's just say I want to I create an audience of anybody coming to any page of my website. That's one audience. Then I could create something like anybody coming to my yoga category, you know, all all the yoga pages, I can do that. And then if it's a fitness, maybe like, I don't know, I do, I I cover, I have CrossFit articles or something like that. Then I can create a CrossFit audience, that sort of thing. So the pixel, you can create like as many audiences as you want. And I mean, I would encourage you to just get as creative as you possibly can with that. Right. So here's one thing we're doing uh, in my brand. So I have a very popular podcasting tutorial at podcastingtutorial.com. And we're keeping track of people through a Facebook pixel who land on that page so that when the time comes to release a podcasting course or a product or, or something that involves ads, I can specifically target people who I know have been on that page. I love you, man. That's good, right? I love, I love the fact you've done that. Okay. Yeah. And, we, and we're, we're actually, our plan this year, we had the team fly in, as you remember, uh, yep. not too long ago. And our plan is to do this sort of landing page strategy where we really crush it with specific categories so podcasting is one that already exists. I just came out with the email marketing tutorial at startingemaillist.com. And there's gonna be other tutorials that are very just in your face, over the top value. We're gonna be keeping track of people who consume that content and then be able to offer them things later. Um, I love it. So you guys are getting an inside uh, view, if you will, of kind of the plan. So I don't know if that's scary though, because now you know when you visit podcastingtutorial.com and like I'm keeping track that you're there. But that's good because... It, this isn't like a, again, back to mindset. This isn't like a, hey, I'm tricking you kind of thing. This is, hey, it's a way for me to learn more about what you do and the actions you take so I can better serve you. And that's what yeah. I feel should be the approach to this, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I I love that. Like the whole idea here is, you know, like the retargeting and we're building audiences. This, like like you said it well, Pat, this is not like to get tricky or to trick people. Like this is like, all right, if, you sh- if you're showing an interest in, in this product or this topic, I should say, let's serve you better by giving you more information about this and then possibly introducing you to new information that is going to be relevant to you since you're looking at, you know, X, Y, Z topic over here that maybe you're not quite sure that this even exists yet, but you, you know, you as the, as the, um, content producer, you know that it's relevant. So maybe you can introduce that to that person over time. You know, this is to better serve people's needs because it's based on what that person is sort of, quote unquote, raising their hand saying, yeah, I'm interested in this. I want to hear more. Right. Perfect. Thank you for for yeah. uh, extending that. Um, going back to our yoga example. OK, yeah. so we're tracking people who are visiting our website just in general. We're yep. tracking people who are visiting the sort of the yoga page. We're tracking people who are visiting the CrossFit category page. Uh, so we could serve different ads to them depending on, you know, what we know about them. So, for example, exactly. the, the yoga people. We know they like yoga, so we don't have to say, hey, do you like yoga? Try this. No, right. it's like it's a different ad versus somebody who may be CrossFit. We can serve them in that an ad that says uh, one of the best ways to recovery is through yoga. Exactly. Check out this brand new thing yep. or whatever. Yep. Um, and then we'll get into some a little bit on ad copy and images and videos and whatnot in, in a moment. Um, but I also know a lot of people and I'll be doing this as well because uh, I haven't implemented it yet at the time of this recording. But. A lot of people are doing very well by tracking on their website using this Facebook pixel who lands on sales pages for particular items mm-hmm. yep. uh, and also who lands on the uh, cart or or billing information page. Somebody who yep. clicks to buy it, but then they abandon before they purchase. You can yep. bring them back more easily uh, yep. through retargeting, knowing that they are like piping hot. They just, for some whatever reason, missed out on on finishing that close. Yeah, exactly. I mean, use the pixel, as I mentioned before, like get creative with the pixel. So when you're using, let's just say um, you're using lead pages and 
even though we've placed our pixel on the website, lead pages is an outside tool. So we will have to put the pixel again on our, let's just say our, our, our opt-in page. If we're, if we're, if we have it, you know, come uh, download this cheat sheet or, or yoga checklist or whatever. I'll okay. So head. Facebook to lead page. Yep. Okay. Yep. With so a giveaway. Exactly. And so to, to what you were saying, Pat, is that how can I use this pixel to, uh, I don't want to, um, the word I was going to say was catch, but, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but it's, you're using the pixel to move people further along your sales funnel. Mm. And so if we want people to opt in for our, you know, our checklist and they land on the opt-in page, but didn't actually make it to the thank you page, like the, Hey, thank you for opting in. That doesn't mean that they weren't interested. You know, maybe the phone rang or the doorbell rang or the, you know, the baby's going crazy or whatever it is. We can retarget those people to move them further along our funnel. Right. And and you and what you were talking about is even more advanced with the add to cart and and that sort of thing. So you can pixel all, like people along every step of your funnel, and each time they don't make it to the next step. So if they add it to if they click add to cart but don't actually complete the purchase you can retarget them to, again, move them further along that sales funnel. Right, and this is for those of you listening, you might have noticed in the past that you've maybe visited a product on Amazon or some other company's website, and then for whatever reason, it seems like kind of mysterious, but you see it on Facebook the next day as an ad, and you're wondering why. This is how it works. Yeah. Right, yep. That this is the the mechanism by which that happens. Okay, Um and I know we're going to talk about ad copy, yeah. but I, I just want to mention this because I think it's really important. This actually just came up with uh, a couple of students of mine recently. And so they were retargeting just like we're talking about right now. So they had a, uh, a webinar. And so they were targeting people who, uh, who opted in or excuse me, who registered for the webinar, but didn't actually attend the webinar. So they were retargeting those people. And the message was, in their ad copy was, I noticed that you didn't make it to the name of the webinar. Whoa. And that's and, usually a very high percentage of people, actually. Yes. And Facebook, um, I don't know if Facebook uh, shut his account down, but they definitely flagged him for that. And his account is fine. Like, it, he, got it, he got it worked out. But that was the reason. And this goes back to what we we're talking about in the very beginning is Facebook sees that as not a very good user experience because it's obvious that you are quote unquote tracking them. And so just be careful with that sort of language. You know, anytime you're using you or, you know, hey, I noticed you uh, visited this page but decided not to do it, you know, just be careful with that. Okay. With that. You, can, you can say that, but just it's how you say it is you just got to be really careful. <laughs> Sound like we're breaking up or something. It's not what you said. <laughs> it's how you said it. <laughs> right. It's not you. It's me. <laughs> um, okay. So what would have been a better form of copy. I knew you were going to ask me that. Um, let's see. Um, would it be maybe, something about just the deal that was on the webinar and how there's a limited time for it? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, you could do that. Or, um, maybe you have a replay and you're just ah, letting them, letting them know about the replay, the replay. And, nice. Yeah. Just say, um, Hey, wanted to give you a heads up that, you know, the, the, you know, whatever the name of that webinar, uh, replay is up and available for a limited time. You know, uh, we'd love to have you check it out. Here's the link. You know, just something simple like that. Okay. So you're kind of saying the same thing, but you're just saying it in a little bit of a different way. Understood. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, going back to the yoga thing. Okay, let the, the, we had talked about. Okay, just purely promoting the product and kind of understanding whether or not people purchase or not, uh, and depending on what page they, they are on the site. Let's let's talk about which I feel is another common thing, especially for our listeners, uh, which is driving traffic to a webinar registration page. Like, let's get a little yep. bit more into the details of that, how to, how to win uh, with that. Sure. So the first thing that you want to do is now that you have your strategy, meaning like, okay, we're going to run a webinar now. We have our topic for the webinar. We have, you know, that sort of, that language that we're going to use to get those people interested. Mm -hmm. So now from a, from a setup perspective, you want to make sure that um, so the first step that when you set up your ads is Facebook is obviously going to have you name your campaign, but then you have to choose an objective. And this is like, you know, do I want to get conversions? Do I want to get, am I, do I want to send traffic to uh, a blog post or, um, you know, do I want to get video views? That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The objective is so critical because you're telling Facebook 
what you want out of your Facebook ad campaign. So it, and when you do that, it sets, it's all about Pat. It's all about the algorithm. It's all about this algorithm that runs in the background on Facebook for your Facebook ads. And so when you choose an objective, you're telling Facebook's algorithm, okay, I want, uh, I'm going to choose conversions because I want people to convert on my webinar registration page. And, and Facebook uses this to show your ads to as many people within the target audience that you're going to set up Mm -hmm. who are most likely to convert on your landing page. And it knows this because it has all this data about its users. And so that's the first step is being really clear on what your objective is going to be. So if you're, if you are doing a webinar registration, you want to send people to your webinar registration page, then I recommend doing the conversions objective. That's the first step. Okay. Um, do we want to get, do we want to kind of keep going from there through our, through our setup? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I think it'd be worth talking about sure. you know, more details, even beyond Facebook related to setup, uh, getting people registered for the webinar, you know, having a lead page to collect yep. the emails yep. and whatnot. That's the easiest thing. And, and that's what we do in our business is we use lead pages. We have our webinar, we have our webinar. We're actually setting this up. Um, when we're talking about that, we're having this conversation now, we're actually in the process of setting, um, a webinar registration up. So we, I just chose the, chose the template yesterday in lead pages. Cool. So I'll fill the, you know, the, all the, the necessary copy on the page out. And then we use go to webinar for our live webinars. And so we connect that with, with the lead page, which is all done in the integration settings within lead pages. It's super, super easy to do. Mm-hmm. And then we use Infusionsoft. And so we just, we create the campaign in Infusionsoft first and then we can choose within lead pages that, hey, we use we use Infusionsoft and this is the name of the campaign. And then we can connect lead pages to our email CRM, which is in, in my case, it's Infusionsoft and to go to webinar so that whenever anybody lands on that webinar registration page and opts in, they not only get added to Infusionsoft, my email list, they get added to the campaign in Infusionsoft, but they also get added to the webinar in go to webinar. Right. And then and, they and, get the series of emails that come out that remind exactly. them about the webinar that's coming up. Exactly. And they get put into whatever sequence you have for them. Yep. Yep. I'm also going to have a, a thank you page, which I also get from lead pages. So it's like, you know, my, the webinar thank you page. Mm-hmm. Hey, thanks for, thanks for, um, uh, registering. What I like to do is just put a quick little video on there. That's actually one thing I did this morning is I recorded a couple of quick little thank you videos for when they register for the webinar, I have a I have a um, a video there for them, letting them know, just kind of reiterating what they're going to learn, how excited I am to have them join. Cool. And then I just have a quick reminder, like, hey, make sure you put this on your calendar so that you can make some time um, to be there. I also place the Facebook Pixel on each of those pages, so the registration page and the thank you page, and uh, and then I do I, I'll create an audience of people who land on the registration page, but didn't make it to the thank you page, which takes us back to what we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. But then I also create um, a conversion. I use that thank you page as the conversion. So I can go in and create what they call a custom conversion. So I can just, so whenever anybody lands on uh, that thank you page, I, from my Facebook ad, I know that that's a conversion based from, that's coming from my Facebook ad. So in other words, it lets Facebook know and you know yep. that somebody yep. completed the task, which was, again, the goal is to sign them up to the exactly. webinar. Yep, exactly. exactly. Nice. Inter- okay, you run your webinar through GoTo, um, yep. GoToWebinar. So you'll have a list of people who attend versus who, who don't ten- attend. If you're not using GoToWebinar, I think you could do the same thing, but you'd have to include a pixel on a landing page where your uh, where your webinar is hosted, right? So you could see actually who who gets there. Yeah, most of the most of the webinar platforms out there, whether whether you're doing a live webinar or an automated webinar, will tell you will will kind of split up that um oh, right, you know right. attended versus didn't attend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Let's get into f- ad types because yeah. is it simply a hey do I just write a message saying hey go sign up for my webinar or is it an image that's pretty cool or is it a video like how do we, how do we maximize our effort here? Yeah. So this is one of those, again, where there's no right or wrong. It's like, all right, I'm going to test different, different ad types here to figure out where I get the best results to keep it really simple. What I like to do is test an image ad versus a video ad. And so in that case, I would have everything about the ad the same. So it's the ad copy is the same. The headline is the same. Everything is, everything is the same, but I would change the, 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 um, ad image 
And the other one, I'd have all the same, same copy, same headline, but I have a video there. So now I'm testing, okay, is the video doing better or is the image doing better? And does that change like depending on the campaign? Which one, yeah, it, which does. one does better? It does, okay. It, it does because it's like, it, it depends on a lot of things actually. You know, what you're promoting, what kind of audience that you are marketing to. You know, for example, going back to the yoga uh, example, maybe maybe the, the, the yoga audience really prefers video you know, and they'd like to watch a quick video. Mm. Um, and then from there, click over to the red, to the registration page. So I, I do recommend testing both when people hear video, like they immediately cringe. They're like, Holy cow. I hate being in front of the camera or I don't have the budget to right. be hiring, you know, hiring a, a pro- yeah, production crew or anything like that. Just grab your phone. I, I literally this morning, I recorded a video on a two, two Facebook ad videos on my phone. I bought a $30, um, it, uh, lapel mic with off of Amazon. It's still, it's, it's one of the, um, uh, corded ones. So it's a little ghetto, but it sounds great. And that's what people like, Pat, people like people are on Facebook to share stuff with their friends and family. So, so actually the less professional looking the, your video, oftentimes, I don't want to say all the time, but oftentimes it works better because it looks like a piece of content that you'd be sharing with your, with your friends or family. So just grab your smartphone, grab your iPhone, or your Android device, they all have great video cameras in them these days and just start recording. Some of my best performing video ads are just me with my earbuds in plugged into my phone. I'm walking down the street and I'm just holding it out and I'm talking into it. Um, you know, letting people know about whatever I was, I was marketing and that type of video works extremely well. Just make sure that you, when you are doing videos, just be really conscious of, okay, to give your call to action. Meaning if you are sending them to a webinar registration page, for example, let them know, say, hey, click the link in this in this post here to go register for my, you know, upcoming event or something like that. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Um, that's great to hear. I think a lot of people are going to be happy. They don't have to go all out with those videos. Um, OK, so so these ads, these this image and video ad, it's not it's not putting a Facebook update with an ad or with an image and or a video and clicking boost post. Right. This is done through the ad manager, correct? Uh, yeah. And I'm a fan of using the power editor. Okay. to to create my ads. And the biggest I get the, I get the question a lot like, well what's the big difference? You can you can certainly go into Ads Manager and start there's a nice green button there that says create an ad uh, in Facebook that will take you to the Ads Manager to start creating your ad. I look at that as it's that's great to do sort of one off ads, but if you're looking to create multiple ads, the fastest way to do it is with Power Editor. Yes, you go in there for the if you go in there for the first time you're like, "Holy cow, what am I looking at here?" But and there's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you do get the hang of it, it is quite easy um, to, to do. And they've made a lot of improvements in order to make that um, make it make it easier to use. So I do recommend using Power Editor to do that uh, to do that stuff. But when it comes down to like really choosing an ad type, you know, going into set your ad up. Um, you know, you mentioned does it have to have an image? Does it have to have a video? I want to kind of throw you a curveball here. One of the better performing ads I've had over the past two months is, excuse me, I posted, um, just had a, and I was promoting a webinar where I was talking about the webinar. I shared a story. I posted this on my, excuse me, on my Facebook page with no image at all, no image, no video. It was just a post. And, you know, everyone always says like, well, what do I write for my ad copy? How do I write good ad copy? Mm -hmm. It's about being conversational. It's like just sitting down. If you're a sit down with your target audience, well, you know, you're having coffee, What would that conversation be like? So the more conversational that you can be and the more real that you can be, the better. And so for this post, I just wrote this just it was actually quite long. I don't know how many words it was. It was long, though. And it was just a long conversational post about um, about this webinar was leading into the webinar. And I just sort of softly invited people to the webinar. And that was I had no image. And I actually, so that was on my Facebook page. And then I went into Power Editor and turned that into an ad. And so that was my ad. So all you saw from it was the um, first several lines of text. And that was it. And it looks like, cop- it looks like you know, uh, copy because that's what it is. It doesn't look like an ad. And I got more comments on that about like, hey, just love the approach of this ad, that sort of thing. So oh, you don't, cool. you know, you don't have to use an image or um, a video, although I do recommend it, but this is another example of like, maybe, you know what? I want to test some different things out. Nice. Okay. So 
through that, you had said that you had actually created an update on your page and then just turn that into an ad as yep. well. So you could do that. That is, is that how you normally go about it or it doesn't There's really matter? Yeah, there's different ways you can do it. So, I mean, a, a good way, if you have a pretty active Facebook page, is you you can do a post on your page, and maybe this is that maybe you are doing a video. So you, you do the video on your page. Maybe it's a Facebook Live. Face, Facebook loves when you do Facebook Lives, and then you turn around and, and turn those into video ads. Facebook so loves they that. like that. Okay. Yeah. Um. It just another another word of caution. If you do that and you are doing a Facebook Live and you have some sort of you know, inkling that you might turn that into an ad. Again, just be really intentional about your call to action. Like, don't forget to let people know what you want them to do in that video. Right, right, right. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, okay, we talked about uh, retargeting, pixeling already, the the ad copy and whatnot. Um, what are some of the biggest mistakes people are making when it comes to Facebook ads? Um, big, well, I mean, kind of goes back to that first thing we talked about is they'll, they'll start without a strategy in place and they just start spending money and, th and that's when they get into, um, you know, Facebook ads don't work and they just, you know, they, they try it for a couple of days and they throw up their arms and say, ah, this stuff doesn't work. I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh -huh. And oftentimes it's because they don't have a clear strategy in place, right? Like close on the heels of that is, the other the other big mistake I see people make is that they don't have the mindset of, you know, the, the patience of testing things out. Yeah. Again, they're like two days in and like, oh, this isn't working. I'm done with this. You know, no, no, no. You've got to give you know, you got to give it a, you got to give it a chance um, to work. And along those lines, again, another mistake I see people make is that. For example, when they start their ads, let's just say I start the, I start my ads at you know 6 a.m. On a, on, a, on a Wednesday morning by two o'clock in the afternoon, if those ads aren't doing well, people often freak out and shut the ads off. You've got to give Facebook's algorithm time to do its thing. So you've got to give, you've got to give time. I like to say at least 72 hours and then check your ads to see how they're doing. But people too often make a decision too quickly on how well their ads are doing uh, or not doing mm -hmm. within a matter of hours. And it, that's just, it's too, it's too soon to, um, you gotta let, you gotta let them go longer. Um, one of the other mistakes I see people make, and I totally get how people think about this or, or how this comes up is that when you put multiple ads within one ad set. So if I'm targeting, you know, whole foods again, and then I want to, I want to test out, say like three different ads, or let's just say two, two ads. You, a lot of people put both of those ads within the same ad set. And the idea there is that Facebook is Facebook's algorithm is going to split test that for you, meaning those two ads. Well, it will. But what really is happening is what I like to say, Facebook is, de quote unquote, declaring a winner far too soon. So mm -hmm. if you've got two ads running against that same audience, let's just say within the first two hours, Facebook is going to kind of see which one's getting the more traction and put more emphasis on that one and then stop delivering really to the other one. When in reality, it really didn't give it enough chance to truly see which one was performing better. When in that, you know, if the one that like, they're, they're declaring quote unquote the loser, maybe that's still a really good ad. It just didn't give, have enough time to, uh, to really deliver. So instead, rather than putting multiple ads within that ad set, I like to break it out actually. So what I would do is I'd have one ad set if I want to test um, different, you know, a couple different ads, I would have one ad set. Let's just say our, we're, we're targeting Whole Foods. We're having one version of the ad, and then I would have another identical ad set. Everything is the same except I'm I'm doing another version of that ad, and that way I'm getting a more sort of, excuse me, apples to apples comparison. I mean, it's not a hundred percent, but it's much much better there to see which one is performing better. Nice, love it. So patience is a really a key, key uh, yes. component here, it seems. Awesome. And then finally, you know, there's obviously a lot more to this. Um, I wouldn't expect anybody to just get up after this episode and start running ads. Like it's going to take right. a lot more research and, and whatnot. So a couple things. One, where can people find out more information uh, to get more advice on on uh, Facebook ads? And if somebody's very serious about wanting to, to do this, um, what would you recommend they do? Should they take a course? Should they hire somebody to do it? Mm. Um, you know, what, what would in all seriousness, be the best option for people who really want to do this, but just obviously just need some help. Yeah. 
I, I think, I mean, one of the things that, that kills me, Pat, is that I've had so many students come to me after they've joined one of my courses. And the reason that they're joining is because they hired somebody to run their ads. They didn't understand Facebook ads well enough to, to, to check the work that whoever they hired was doing. And I've heard horror stories of like, I've lost $6,000 in three months. I, you know, I'm out $8,000. Yeah. And it was all because the person that they hired or the agency that they hired wasn't getting them the results, but yet they didn't understand well enough to be able to check the work or to ask the right questions. And so I'm all for, if you're going to hire, hire out your Facebook ads, by all means do that. But I first recommend at least having a base knowledge of Facebook ads to, in order to kind of have a knowledgeable conversation with the person or agency that you hire so that you Mm. can protect yourself basically. Um, you know, I, there's one example that comes to mind. One of my students is from a couple of years ago that happened to her where she, um, I think she was out like $8,000 over, over a few months and she came in, learned Facebook ads, ran them herself for her own business and got better results for herself as opposed to when she, um, was hiring them out all she's all the, all the while she had the intention still of hiring them out again, but she wants, you know, she wanted to learn first. So I, I would recommend that. Yeah, it's just like kind of when you start your own website, you know, it's different, weird, you mess up and things go wrong. Now you're not losing money necessarily, except for, you know, just the purchase of the domain and and theme and whatnot. Um, But then you learn over time and then often what happens is you hire somebody to then help you with your website and posting on WordPress or whatever. um, And you know how to talk to them and you know exactly what's going on and something were to go wrong, you can direct them in the right way. And I think think that's great advice, Rick. So in terms of, uh, where they can get more information about yeah. potentially getting a course or, you know, other training related to this, where could they go? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm going to pimp out my podcast here. If that's cool. Do it. The, the art of paid traffic, man. Um, we, we talk a lot about Facebook ads. I mean, it's certainly not as, as, as from the name of the show, it's not all about Facebook ads, but we cover a lot about Facebook advertising. Um, you know, it's, it's a way that I'm always updating people on what the latest stuff is. We talked earlier about Facebook often changing things up. So we cover that stuff. Um, I do a lot of case studies. I bring my students onto the show a lot to talk about what they're doing in their business. And then we talk about all kinds of other things like, like, um, you know, uh, landing pages and conversion strategy and copywriting and YouTube ads and all kinds of other stuff. Um, so that I would say that's a great way to, you know, great free way um, to get information. Also, uh, we have a bunch of information on the site, uh, rickmulready.com. So you can check stuff out, um, there and we're, uh, we're releasing courses and stuff this year as well. So lots of different resources to learn from. Nice. Love it, man. Thanks so much for uh, coming on and sharing this wisdom with us. I think it's going to fire up a lot of people and get them more interested. Definitely. Uh, but, but, but I guess just don't go and buy ads like today, right? Like actually do the research. (laughs) Yeah. And and do it the right way. And there's a lot of like from what I heard about Facebook, and I'm really excited to be initiating this now, is if you do it, if you get it tuned correctly, if you've got the faucet going in the right in the right sort of stream uh, flowing, um, it's essentially like trading quarters for dollars. Like you put a quarter in, you get a dollar out and then you can just turn on that faucet even more. Put a dollar in, get four dollars out. The, the, the biggest regret that I hear that I have and also a lot of people that I know have, especially when they're doing launches and stuff like that, is that they didn't spend enough on Facebook. Ads. They didn't spend enough. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. But yeah, don't run out and like just be go at it slowly, be strategic about it and, uh, you know, and learn along the way and, and, and make sure you have fun with it and, and stay at it. Have the right mindset around it. Nice, man. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it, man. And I'll uh, see you around town and at the uh, the downtown co-working space. Yeah, thanks, buddy. I appreciate right, it, man. See you. Bye. All right, wasn't that fantastic? I hope you enjoyed that interview with my good friend Rick Mulready from rickmulready.com. That's M-U-L-R-E-A-D-Y.com. And then also The Art of Paid Traffic, a podcast I highly recommend you listen to, especially if you are diving into the world of Facebook ads and other platforms and their advertising platforms uh, as well. So uh, Rick, I know you listen to the show. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for spending time. And I know we debriefed after this and I just wanted to reiterate that live here. I'm just super stoked to see how far you've come along 
since we've started because I was there right when Rick started to do stuff online for the first time. And um, it's just it's just been massive what he's done. And so I'm proud to say that I'm his friend and that I'm somebody who recommends his stuff. So go ahead and check him out, rickmulready.com and The Art of Paid Traffic on iTunes or wherever you buy your or uh, dine on your favorite uh, podcasting dishes. I don't know what I'm saying. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening in. I appreciate you. And before I let you go, I want to let you know really quick that, uh, you know, in the beginning of the episode, I mentioned I've been working on some courses and stuff and why I'm going to be getting into advertising. Well, I want to define what those courses are for you really quick because maybe you don't know about them. And that's okay if you don't because actually not all of you should know they exist because I've been targeting specific segments of my email list. Another reason why segmenting your email list is really important so that you don't, you don't bombard people with messages or sales pitches about things that don't matter to them. Well, here are the two things that I've been working on for you. You may have heard of this one. It's called Smart From Scratch. It's a course that is currently closed. You can sign up for the wait list, but it is opening in June. That's next month for those of you who've been listening to the podcast as they come out. So it's reopening in June. It's just for people who are just starting out in their business journey. Maybe you are have just been too scared to pick an idea and move forward with it. Well, this course is going to help you nail down an idea or finally find one that you know is going to work in the market that you're getting into. Or maybe you have a thousand ideas and you just kind of want to narrow it down to one. Perhaps you've tried online business a little bit and or, or even offline business and it just didn't work for you. Uh, well, this is going to help you get started on the right foot. It's very similar to Will It Fly in terms of content, but it is a lot more detailed. There is accountability and hand-holding through the process. It's done on a step-by-step -step lesson basis. And also there's a community aspect to it as well, which is really helpful. Actually, I've surveyed my students there and they say the community is one of the best parts. So I highly recommend you check it out. If that's for you, sign up to the waitlist right now so you can get first notification of it. And that is gonna be at smartfromscratch.com. The second course I've been working on, actually, this is the first time I'm mentioning this on the podcast, but the reason I created this one is because many of you have been asking me for this solution, and I have to provide for you when you guys ask so much for something, and even though there are people out there who, who are my friends, who I even recommend, have recommended in the past that you go to, and I still recommend them, people still wanted me to create this course, and so I have it here for those of you who wanna get access to it when it comes out in the very near future after Smart From Scratch is launched, and that is my podcasting course. That's right. I created a podcasting course to help walk people through the very beginning stages, all the pre-launch and planning process, plus launch week and launch day, what to do at those points, and finally, what to do after launch, including how to automate, how to monetize, and all those sorts of things. Everything you need to know about podcasting in one full setup, including a community with office hours and all that good stuff at PowerUp podcasting.com because that's what a podcast has done for me it's literally powered up my brand and took it to took it to new heights and that's what I want it to do for you as well so poweruppodcasting.com is where you can sign up for the waitlist and again th this is something that you guys asked of me and actually I put this together for a special group of people that I presented to at an event not too long ago and it was amazing. The, the, the response from the people who were there were just like, yes, finally, Pat, you created something that I needed and I'm going to get into it. And actually we had 160 students at that presentation sign up and go through as a beta group, as a founding group of students. And they said nothing but amazing things about it. So I'm here to help you as well when the time is right. Later this year, in a few months, it's gonna reopen again for you. And that's at poweruppodcasting.com. Woo! Hope you guys are excited as I am. I'm excited. Hope you're excited. I'm excited because guess what? We got more advertising stuff coming up later this month, plus some amazing guest posts and blog content related to this topic as well. But until then, please just keep working on what you're working on and don't hesitate to take bold actions, guys. That's what's gonna help you move forward. It's those bold actions, those things that make you a little bit scared. That's how you know that you're doing the right thing, right? If you are not nervous about what, the, like the work that you're doing, well, guess what? You're probably not going big enough. So go big, go bold, get scared, and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers, guys. Thanks for listening to the Smart Passive Income Podcast at www.smartpassiveincome.com. Hey there, and thanks for sticking around to the end. If you're looking for more great shows like this one, definitely give How Success Happens a listen. Another great show from the Entrepreneur Podcast Network. On How Success Happens, 
Robert Tuckman features some of today's brightest entrepreneurial minds talking about overcoming challenges and viewing them as learning experiences to create success. The challenges that entrepreneurs face are ultimately what make many of us successful, however we define success, and that's what the show is all about. There's lots of names you'll surely recognize on the show every single week. Just recently, Robert had Nasty Gal CEO Sophia Amoruso on the show and the former CEO of Snapple the week before that, which is really awesome. So listen to how success happens right now on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, or Stitcher.